The title of this video is not a clickbait. Today I'm going to tell you the story of my Hashimoto's disease and how it nearly killed me. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Alicia for those of you who are new here and for those who are not, who are with me for a while. This video will provide explanation as well uh, to why I was off YouTube for almost two years. Because the primary reason why I was off YouTube, uh, despite all my moving across the world, that was not the reason I was off YouTube. The, the reason why was my health issues and very serious ones. So this video will be rather lengthy one. So pull up a seat, grab yourself a coffee or a tea and let's get started. The purpose of this video is, as I said, to give some context to why I was off YouTube for so long. Also, for those of you who are struggling with thyroid issues or Hashimoto disease, to provide some space of understanding um, and support for uh, those of you who are battling this illness, um, as well as maybe uh, having insights to my story will provide you some um, overview on how I'm dealing with that and you might have some takeaways from my story that will benefit you so will, you will not end up like I did. Also for those of you who don't have a condition, however, might have the symptoms that I'm going to discuss in today's video, maybe this video may be a sign for you to get yourself tested, to go to, to, go to a doctor and get yourself diagnosed if you recognize the symptoms uh, in yourself that's going to be discussed in this video. Don't wait, don't um, let the condition develop untreated, just better be safe than sorry, have your test done. Maybe it's not uh, Hashimoto's, maybe it's not um, hypothyroidism, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Also, in the word of disclaimers, which I am sick of, but I have to say that for the purposes of YouTube and you know, there are different type of people watching video. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional. This is my experience and this is my story. When in doubt, always seek medical advice. I'm going to start this video by giving an overview on what thyroid gland is and what f function does it have in the body, because we all have a thyroid gland, a little butterfly-shaped gland uh, in, in here, but not many people really think about it, give it a thought or even is bothered to find out what um, functions thyroid have, and it has a very crucial function in our body. So I'm going to give a overview, quick overview to that and what are the symptoms of both hyper and hypothyroidism, as well as Hashimoto's disease. And then I'm going to tell you my story and how the disease has progressed in my case and how it made me land in an emergency room in a hospital ready for life-saving surgery. So thyroid is a gland that regulates all the most important and crucial body functions uh, such as metabolism, heart rate, muscle development, bone development, overall body development, uh, brain function, breathing, um, heart rate I already mentioned, uh, metabolism, digestion. So all the things that we depend on all the functions of the body that we depend on to live and function properly are fueled by our thyroid hormones and without proper function of thyroid none of the things that I just mentioned will, will function properly and without functions of these major body organs and uh, systems we can't function properly uh, on a daily basis and it severely will affect our life. So depending on whether we have too much or too little thyroid hor hormone, we may develop hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. So hyper, obviously, when it's too much and hypo when it's too little. And here I um, wrote a note listing the symptoms of each case because there are so many and although I suffered each and every single of them and all of them, I know that some people with the condition do not have all the symptoms, maybe they have a milder case of a um, condition, but in my case I suffered all of them. So although I know firsthand how it feels, it's um, quite difficult to list them on, to um, on top of my head for you, so not to omit any of them. I have them written here because each of them is important. So in case of hyperthyroidism, um, the symptoms are fatigue, tiredness, excessive fatigue, excessive tiredness, there is no amount of rest or sleep that will 
make you get rid of this tiredness and fatigue. The tiredness is overwhelming, overflows your whole your body. It's impossible to function with the level of tiredness that people have with that condition. So fatigue, tiredness, heat intolerance, restlessness, excess sweating, excessive hunger, mood swings, nervousness, panic attacks, abnormal heart rhythm, because as I said, thyroid severely affects, I mean, impacts heart function. So with hyperthyroidism, we will have um, palpitations, excessive heart rhythm, also known, known as tachycardia, fast heart rate, um, difficulty falling asleep or insomnia, irregular menstruation, very heavy bleeding, heavy menstruation and very painful as well, hyperactivity uh, and irritability, puffy eyes or protruded eyes, so they look like they're gonna come out, just like my chihuahua, weight loss, digestive issues, hair loss, muscle weakness, sometimes hand tremor, trembling of hands, and warm skin. So that's the hyperthyroidism. Now let me tell you hypothyroidism. So it's fatigue and tiredness as well, excessive, extreme, debilitating fatigue. I can't even describe how tired one feels with this condition. Lethargy, feeling cold, a delayed puberty or slow growth, hair loss, skin dryness, brittle nails, constipation, dry skin, enlarged thyroid, um, also known as goiter, high cholesterol, uh, irregular um, cycles, irritability, sensitivity to cold, uh, lowered libido, depression, slowed heart rate, difficulties breathing, um, sluggishness, weight gain, um, brain fog, as you see, I just forgot what I was going to say, as well as joint pain and muscle pain. So as you see, the list goes on and on and on and on. And uh, with Hashimoto's disease. So what is the Hashimoto disease? People often use hypothyroidism and Hashimoto disease interchangeably. This is not the same thing. So those are two different conditions. The reason why people often use them together is because they come together. Like lots of people have those two conditions together, like me, which is hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's disease. But it doesn't mean that every single person with hypothyroidism will develop um, Hashimoto disease and opposite and the other way around. So it's not always the case. And those are different conditions. So I got out of breath just speaking, as you see. So what is Hashimoto's um, disease? Hashimoto disease is an um, autoimmune condition. It's a chronic illness. It's a lifelong condition. And it's a very debilitating illness. And it has a long list of symptoms as well. So it is an autoimmune condition, meaning that body produces um, antibodies that attack attacks own body tissues and destroys thyroid gland in that particular case. They destroyed thyroid to the point that thyroid doesn't um, sustain its function anymore and stop uh, providing necessary um, hormones that make it possible for the body to function as it should be. Therefore, if you are unfortunate enough to develop this autoimmune condition, your heart rate will be affected your breathing, your digestion, your metabolism, uh, your joints, bone, muscle structure, everything will unfortunately suffer. Your brain, your mood, and brain in the in meaning brain fog, forgetfulness, difficulties, concentrating. It even affected my voice. I have a more a coarse voice, deeper voice than I used to have. Uh, it causes swollen face. Yeah, I think I listed majority of the things that it causes. There is more to it and every everyone's case is different as well. Some people can only suffer with a couple of symptoms. Some people can have them all and all depends on severity of the condition and the level of advancement. Before I continue and tell you my story and example of how it progressed in my case, I just want to ask you, if you know someone or if you are someone who has uh, thyroid issues, 
and is functioning fine, don't come at me with the comments telling me I know someone who knows someone who knows someone that has a little bit of that condition and is functioning just fine. Well, if that's the case, that is good for them, they are very lucky, means that uh, they don't have full-blown thyroidism and they don't have Hashimoto disease. And that's very lucky. And you know, with every condition which is chronic and which is autoimmune condition, it's like with, for example, like with a cancer, there are different stages to it. And you will not come up to someone who suffers for this unfortunate condition uh, such as cancer and tell them, oh, you're fine. I know someone who also have it and they are fine, so you should be fine too. I know that sometimes people are saying that for a multitude of reasons. One can be lack of knowledge of what the disease is, because it's still not so common that people know a lot about it. Lots of people don't know anything about it. Sometimes the people want to offer some sort of, um, in their mind, what is support. So they just try to play it down. It's not such a big deal. I know someone who has it and functioning just fine. And some people can just look at you, like like they look at me, and they will not ever assume that I'm sick to that degree and to that extent, and they, they can assume that I'm just fine and I'm exaggerating and they're just playing it down, which happened to me a couple of times. I'll tell you a quick uh, side story. Once on the plane I met a girl and we started talking and one thing led to another and we discussed that we both have thyroid issues and um, she started saying something along the lines like, Oh, when you will be my age, uh, you will see it's gonna get worse. You do, you have nothing. You don't know. <laughs> After she said that, I asked her like, how old is she? So well, I need to know what to prepare for. Turned out she's exactly my age, and when we compared our results, my results were much higher than her. So you know, just because someone doesn't look totally bad, ill, and sick, doesn't mean that this person is doing completely fine, and it's not really uh, sick at all, indeed. So yeah, people assume it, the same thing happens to me when I go uh, to work out, when I go for Pilates, and I really love Pilates, but every time I go there, I have to force myself to go because I'm so tired and so fatigued. Most of the instructors know uh, that I don't like to be pushed to work harder. I just work within my abilities and, you know, just the fact that I'm there at all, I deserve a pat in the back with uh, uh, what my current range of um, hormone level is but some people don't know and they look at me and they assume that i am fit and they try to push me harder which i am not able to do and they, th they think that i'm lazy that i don't want to work harder and a couple of couple of guys mm, one instructor and another guy they told me so because they assume that i'm just being lazy i don't want to push myself meanwhile my heart rate is through the roof and i am struggling to breathe and uh, start having excessive yawning issues, which is known as apnea, that's difficulty breathing, connected to Hashimoto's disease as well. So never assume. As I said, people maybe don't do it for bad intentions, but what it does to someone who is battling lifelong um, autoimmune chronic illness, what it can do, it doesn't it's not in my case because I'm quite self-aware and I know myself well enough, but some people can be affected quite severely by this type of uh, judgments because they may start comparing themselves to other people saying, oh, I'm just being lazy, I should push myself more. Uh, yeah, people just tell me, get yourself together, work harder, do this, do that. You know, you can't do this and do that if, you, if your health doesn't allow you. To do so anyway enough of side story let me now quickly run you through how disease progressed in my case and how i ended up uh, in a hospital fighting for my life i've been sick with thyroid issues all my life since early childhood ever since i remember i had symptoms of hyperthyroidism most of the researchers says that the cause of thyroid issues is unknown. It's uh, either genetic or inv environmental. I believe after studying very much in-depth medical uh, articles, I believe that it's stress-induced and so it was in my case. Uh, growing up, I had a very extremely beyond stressed upbringing, stressful upbringing, and uh, the amount of adrenaline and cortisol running through my veins on a daily basis uh, with the amount of stress I had to 
deal with every single day caused that condition, I believe. There may, may be different reasons for other people having that, but that is what I'm more than certain was a crucial factor to development of my condition. In my case, diagnosis didn't happen until high school. So I was suffering all my primary school growing up. I always I was always tired. I was always on a lower range of weight. I was always uh, tiny and skinny. And you know, even my own family and the members of my family were always um, throwing stabs at me that you are too skinny, too skinny. Yeah, I was sick. Uh, my hair were very brittle, weak, always short, sometimes even a boyish cut. Uh, because they were, were really, really fair and um, yeah, not strong because they were constantly falling out. Uh, constant heart issues, uh, trembling of hands, coldness, constant coldness, uh, and extreme, extreme fatigue, tiredness all the time, no matter how much I slept. I was always tired, digestive issues, constant digestive issues, and metabolism was sped up to its upper limits, I guess, because I was eating really a lot and I was always the skinniest one in the classroom. So that continued till high school and in high school it got really bad till the point that I was I started losing hair so much. I was really really skinny. I was 35 kilos at high school <laughs> which is uh, ridiculous when I think about it now. Yeah finally my mother took me to doctors. They diagnosed me with hyperthyroidism. I was put on medications I was referred to monthly visits to check my blood test, my hormones level and the progress of treatment. The treatment was not successful. I was getting worse and worse and worse. I was so tired. And at the time I had so much on my plate. The high school was very difficult for me, not because of high school itself. It's because of the period of time in my life that was happening at home and uh, what I was going through in my personal life my uh, home was not a peaceful place to be at at all and it was not a um, friendly place to grow up it was full of stress daily stress and uh, that also contributed to the fact that my hypothyroidism couldn't come down that the thyroid levels couldn't come down to the right level because as you might know thyroid needs peace and the biggest enemy of thyroid disorder is stress so all the doctors advice as a part of what you can do, what you can control, manage your stress levels, manage your diet, manage your lifestyle. That was out of my control at the time, since I was living in the household that was um, complete madness. So constant stress didn't allow me to, to manage my thyroid issues. Long story, still long. It led to the fact that the doctor decided that despite of having dose of medications constantly increased, my condition is not improving, it's worsening, so what we have to do, we have to kill the thyroid altogether. Because thyroid untreated or can lead to really, really serious life-threatening complications and my heart rate was affected on a daily basis to the point that it's, it started getting really dangerous and I assume, I don't know if it's a standard procedure right now to do what the doctor advised, but it looks like it was back then, uh, almost 20 years ago. So they decided that they will either, either cut out the thyroid altogether to, to stop it from causing havoc in my body or treat it with radioactive iodine. I don't know how, why we chose the latter. So it was, I was treated with radioactive iodine. So it destroyed my, um, my thyroid. So it stopped it from excessive production of the hormone. Uh, causing hyperthyroidism. It got a little bit better, but in the grand scheme of things and in the longer term, it made it everything, I believe it made everything worse because now thyroid was completely non-functional. I had to take medications um, to replace thyroid hormone and over the years it turned into hypothyroidism. And uh, I also developed Hashimoto's disease, which is the autoimmune condition uh, that when thyroid starts producing antibodies that attacks uh, your immune system. It didn't really save me from um, anything. What happened next? I'll try to be concise, but keep in mind I am 38 now, so I'm trying to quickly describe almost 20 years and more of disease progression. After fin I finished high school, I moved out of home, I went to uni, 
uni was relatively okay i think i felt a little bit better because it was yeah a couple of years following the um, iodine radioactive iodine treatment <sighs> after uni also um, after i graduated with my master degree i got a job in the bank which was quite stressful as well so then again not managing um, lifestyle properly and then the problems started again hypothyroidism was ruining my life i was at the time 38 kilos at the age of 28 which is again ridiculous i felt horrible i felt really bad i i went to a doctor and i started treatment um, with different doses of medications again it helped for a couple of years i felt good enough to move abroad i moved to uh, first you, you know my story i lived in six countries so far and if you don't yeah maybe i'll cover more about it in uh, other videos. I moved to Middle East and started working as a flight attendant. In the beginning I was feeling okay, I, I was feeling much more healthy, however I was never 100%, I was always more tired than all the other people my age or younger. I could never do cardio workouts, I was always oversleeping, sleeping more than in my opinion I should or needed. But I was thinking, oh, it's just me, it's just me, like that, you know. Halfway through my time of living in UAE, I started feeling familiar uh, symptoms. Digestive issues, constant tiredness, mood swings, low mood, low energy, body aches, muscles pain, joints pain, uh, lack of motivation. But, you know, most of this I was blaming on my lifestyle. After all, at the time I was a flight attendant, a long-haul flight attendant. All, all I was doing, mostly what I was doing, was ultra-long-haul flights, 15 hours flights to completely different time zones to go across the world. And, of course, everyone would be tired, right, doing so. So I wasn't thinking much about it. And I was just continuing with my life. In fact, at some point I felt... I mean, before, before those symptoms start reoccurring, I felt good enough that I quit uh, my medications. I was like, oh, I'm healthy. My conditions um, self-cured itself. It just retracted. It was in the remission, but in my head I was thinking, oh, I'm fine now. I don't need to do it. I was doing hormone levels from time to time. They were always elevated, but still within the range. So I was like, yeah, whew, okay, I'm fine now. But as I said, halfway through living there, familiar symptoms started um, showing up and worsening over time. It led to the point that I was having extreme digestive issues, constant stomach pains, constant stomach pain, constant tiredness. I was exhausted. I was constantly exhausted a couple of times. If you watch my older videos from flight attendant times, I was crying out of tiredness a couple of times. And uh, yeah, granted, it was 16 hour flight. To, from Abu Dhabi to Melbourne, which is a completely different time zone, but you know, the level of tiredness was out of this world, and yeah, to the point that I cried. And I think it was not only the different time zone, it was not only the work exhaustion, it was definitely my Hashimoto's disease came to get me again. So as I said, I started having digestive issues, extreme stabbing and wrenching, gut-wrenching pain, no matter what I ate, and it was worsening rapidly. I didn't even know what to eat anymore, because whatever I ate, I felt the same. It was not a matter of diet, it was a matter of compromised digestion and um, intestine issues, underlying issues caused by Hashimoto's that slowly progresses, because, you know, Hashimoto's is such a two-faced bitch. It makes you feel sometimes that you are okay, but behind the scenes, it's working towards your demise. So if you think you got better, don't uh, neglect medications and treatment because it just makes you feel it's getting better just to trick you. And then, as I said, it's working towards your demise. So long story short this time, still long. I went to have New York flight. I came back from New York. I, I was feeling very bad in the flight. I was feeling extremely bloated. But then again, lots of crew gets bloated all the time. And yeah, it's also part of the job. You know, high altitude and uh, yeah, irregular eating um, schedule. Of course, again, blame it on the job, blame it on the job. In denial, in denial, not uh, no one believe that I this is coming back and this is... And you know what? Every time this condition coming back, every time it comes back worse than it was before. I came back from New York, I went to bed, I couldn't sleep. The pain was so bad in my stomach, it was so bad. It was getting worse by hour. Finally, 
late night I went to company clinic. They thought I have some food poisoning or indigestion. They, indigestion. they gave me a couple of medications. After one hour they came back hoping that my symptoms should have been better by now. They were only getting worse. And I thought like, okay, it's okay, I'm gonna get better at home. I stood out to walk out of the clinic and then I passed out, out of pain. It was so bad. They called um, ambulance, the ambulance took me to hospital. They did uh, MRI and what they found out is that I had intestine perforation. If you don't know, that's life-threatening um, thing because it can lead to a peritoneum infection and in a matter of hour or two a person can die. Anyway, without going to too many details, I'll, I received the treatment that saved my life. However, the level of treatment and the way I was treated in this Arabic hospital is uh, despicable. And to be honest, I was contemplating suing the hospital at some point because it was beyond horrible. Uh, but after I left hospital, I was happy that I'm alive anyway and I was uh, just too weak and too tired to deal with uh, things such as lawsuit and uh, other issues, so I just let it go. Sometimes I regret because what they deserved was a lawsuit. Anyway, I survived. It was a very traumatic experience, eye-opening. However, still, I didn't give myself enough time to properly recover. I came back to work only one month after. Yeah, I had lots of doctor's referrals uh, as well to find out what could be a direct reason of that. Yeah, we all know I have uh, Hashimoto's disease, but what caused the intestine perforation itself? So as it turned out, you know, Hashimoto is... A social bitch. It's not a single. It's not meant for a single life, clearly, because it likes to pair up with something. It likes to group with something. It doesn't want to live a life on its own. So um, it just wants to attract other autoimmune conditions, as if one autoimmune condition causing this much havoc uh, and destruction is not enough. It invites another one to the party. So in my case, Hashimoto invited celiac disease to the party and they were partying together. So I developed celiac disease, which is gluten intolerance, without knowing. And that was why I constantly had tabbing and wrenching pain in my guts. And I was eating gluten like there's no tomorrow. I was going to Italy, having pasta, pizza, all that. And then I was suffering, not knowing what, what that could be. That was the reason of intestine perforation as it created um, inflammation in the intestine and it finally sort of bursted and it that's what caused the intestine perforation. I'm lucky I'm alive and I'm lucky I'm here today. But discovering that didn't end my troubles and my problems with this condition. As per usual, as the pattern goes, it got better a little bit after that for I would say one and a half year. In the meantime I was lucky enough to meet my husband, get married, I quit my job in Middle East and uh, sadly left the beloved UAE and beloved Etihad Airways and moved to UK and I was feeling all right. After I moved to UK the flare-up and the condition hit again and as I said before it's always double triple or more from what it was. At the time my TSH grew to astonishing number of 26. If you know the healthy range for TSH level is between half and three and a half. So people who have around five they already feel symptoms, they already feel bad. I have a couple of friends who have hyperthyroidism but in their case it's just elevated to around five, six, but they can still function, they're feeling okay, maybe tired sometimes, maybe cold sometimes. In my case it was full blown. I was so tired, not only tired, I was out of breath just talking. I couldn't walk, I couldn't go for a walk. At the time we were living in UK with them in a two-story house, going upstairs was beyond my abilities. I was getting out of breath. I thought I'm gonna spit out my lungs completely. And yeah, it was pandemic. At the time I didn't get the proper treatment. In fact, the treatment I received worsened my condition greatly at the time. So yeah, I was very unlucky with medical care, medical care in terms of my thyroid and Hashimoto issues throughout my life in general. At the time I stopped filming my YouTube videos in UK. I still try to film more uh, when during 
our transition in moving from UK to Australia but at some point I just had to stop because it was it just got to the point that I couldn't breathe as I speak I couldn't my my voice was shaking my heart rate was like I was about to have a heart attack that's how it feels I was not going to have a heart attack but that's the feeling it gives you extreme tiredness extreme brain fog I couldn't get my words out <sighs> yeah it's just in general not a state that anyone would want to find themselves any time of life let alone feel this way every day I was lucky not to get too much weight because I know that lots of people with that condition gains lots of weight and um, this is also the first thing I hear when I tell people I have hypothyroidism and Hashimoto disease that they're like oh you don't look like it because you're not big so I was lucky not to do that but it's not also that I was lucky it's it's a extreme amount of self-discipline and consistency which I'll get to in a moment despite the fact that I didn't uh, gain weight I gained a little bit but I got very swollen. My face was swollen, my eyes were swollen. I didn't look like myself. I didn't like the way I look. It made me self-conscious about how I look because my face was not what I used to look like on a normally. I developed swollen goiter and it was very visible on my neck. My voice sounded like a horse. <sighs> everything, everything was bad. I just couldn't continue filming and I was not in the right mindset and not to even mention depression I got very depressed it really affected me thyroid yeah causes you depression causes you not only mood swings but can lead to full-blown depression so it happened to me as well on top of the cake a cherry on top like that and it was a very difficult time to overcome this many accumulated health issues the reason why I am here at this shape today uh, it's 100% because of my husband, his support, his constant care, him providing me the best treatment, you know, all, all type of doctor, endocrinologist, um, gynecologist, uh, therapist, you name it, uh, all doctors that can help with comprehensive approach to these many issues at the same time. It helped to the degree, but I'm not fully healthy. I mean, no one, one will never be fully healthy with that condition. It can be managed to the level that is remission and one can function and I try my best however to decrease the increased hormone level TSH level from 26 of what it was in UK to normal level took me almost two years took me two years not almost took two years so it's it's easy for this to grow but it's very hard to bring it down uh, in the process yeah, you just feel like a crap the whole time I had to battle all the symptoms I had with that condition depression as well as a couple of miscarriages because what this condition causes is fertility issues so that also took a toll on us yeah and that brings me to this day that I am slightly better but my results are again off range and uh, it affects a couple of aspects of my life and as we speak today is Monday and on Friday I have a booked appointment with a new specialist new endocrinologist which hopefully will help me to adjust the dose of medications to the point that I can function normally every day within within what what's possible for me because it's extremely frustrating demotivating and depressive that you want to do so many things you want to you have so much in your head energy and ideas and uh, willingness to do things but your body doesn't comply and doesn't want to do it and even such a simple thing as walking to Pilates walking uphill makes me completely out of breath makes me stop a couple of times I have a joint spin I feel like grandma Murray sometimes so yeah that brings me to my last topic that I want to cover as I said I've been lucky that I have a support I am able to manage my life in the way that I don't have a stressful job I don't have to to stress over lots of things that lots of people do which I'm very very grateful for but I already had a life stressful enough so in that regard it's a time to chill I guess as I said I'm extremely disciplined and consistent in terms of no matter how tired I am I will still force myself to go to Pilates I will still force myself to cook a healthy nutritious meal that is uh, coherent with my diet requirements like gluten-free and you know anti-inflammatory ticks all the dietary boxes that should be 
picked for me. That requires lots of discipline because I know it's very tempting and very easy to just give up. Like I'm tired. Okay, I don't wanna. I don't wanna do it, and order some fast food or don't go to the gym. But in my case, I think the reason why I, despite such a wrecked health and such a severe hypothyroidism and full-blown Hashimoto disease, I still look the way I look at the age of almost 39 is self-discipline and consistency, which is very, very hard. But and I was always the way that I'm, I push myself too much. I'm trying to let go of this as well, because that can sometimes be stressful to just give myself more grace, more rest. That's something that my husband taught me and he's teaching me this every day and repeats this to me every day. Just rest, rest, rest. Word can wait. Don't stress, don't worry. And I started listening to him and that definitely helps. There are so many more things that I could say about my case and the examples of how the condition was progressing, but then this video would be would very, very long. If one can take one takeaway from this video, if you have a condition, give yourself grace and uh, manage and control what you can, which is your diet, which is your lifestyle. Just don't neglect it. Don't be in denial that I'm better, so that means I'm healthy. Because with Hashimoto's, you're never healthy. You can have better and worse timings, but you're never healthy. So you have to treat yourself as such and give yourself proper care and um, treatment all the time. If you are not sick with this condition, that's great. However, if you observe symptoms that we discussed here, please go to the doctor, test yourself. Better to go just to find out that there's nothing to worry about than live with the condition which is crippling, like a little, you know, a little creep working to your demise behind your back without you knowing because it's so much harder to treat the condition that's been progressing for, a, for years untreated and untreated hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism can be both life-threatening and Hashimoto disease can, uh, with other coexisting autoimmune conditions, can really break your life. So having that said, I hope this video has been helpful to at least one person. If it was helpful to at least one person, it means it, wo it was worth filming. I finally got it off my chest because for the last two years, People were asking me quite often, why, where am I? Why I quit YouTube? Am, am I going to come back? What's going on? So this is what's been going on. It's been a lot, but you know, I always bounce back. Always, always bounce back. It's difficult, but I always bounce back. So I hope that filled in the gaps. I hope it helped someone. I got it off my chest, so that helped me as well. And uh, if you have stories of your condition and how you are dealing with that, please let me know down in the comments. I keep my fingers crossed for all of you battling that chronic illness and hopefully it will treat you mildly. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe uh, so we can see each other more often and discuss variety of topics, not only such a sad and serious topic like this one, but more uplifting and vibrant ones as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.